good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. With me in the studio is Professor Dr. Wolfgang Oertel from the University Hospital in Marburg, and he's one of Germany's leading experts in Parkinson's disease. Professor Oertel, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Is this kind of brain pacemaker the answer for all patients suffering from Parkinson's disease? No, it's for a particular group of Parkinson's patients. They cannot be controlled with drugs the whole day and they show some fluctuation of movements under therapy and in addition they show too much movement when the drug is too strong. So it's not standard therapy? It's uh, an alternative. The procedure in experienced hands is the standard operation. Okay. And are there any risks involved with the brain pacemaker? Very small, to be honest. Yeah. It's a so, standard operation. You know? so, so from the procedure, there's a small risk attached. Yeah. So, so what are the problems around this the, pacemaker? Not every patient wishes to have two small needles in the brain. It's a matter of how, what, how do I think about my brain? Yeah. I'd rather take a drug instead of putting an electrode in. Right, if the drug is effective. Yeah. So the standard therapy still is drugs. Right. Okay, and can drugs cure Alzheimer? No. Uh, Alzheimer's, sorry, Parkinson's disease. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. they cannot. Unfortunately, not. So far, we have no drug which prevents or slows down Parkinson's disease. I'm sorry to say. So it just uh, prevents the symptoms from getting worse. Right. Okay. We got a viewer question from India. Vipin Sharma wants to know whether there are options to treat Parkinson's with alternative medicine. Well, in fact, the standard, the gold standard for treatment of Parkinson's disease comes from the environment. L-DOPA has been found in plants. It just has been purified and has been put in capsules. And what we have just heard about turmeric, I think this is very interesting. I should like to test the compound. So, so you want to do this in your clinic to I test it? I want to it. test it first, but what it does. It would be very interesting if it's helpful for yeah, Parkinson's disease. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, but you're not just getting the L-DOPA out of plants. So, so you're getting it out of plants, but um, you can't just eat the plants um, and get better with No, Parkinson's. this would mean a huge amount of plants. But mm -hmm. uh, it's better to take a capsule. It's standardized. You know, every time I take the tablet, mm -hmm. I get the same dose. That's the advantage. Are there some people more at risk for developing uh, Parkinson's than others? Yes, there are some genes which uh, are pre as well, predicting mm -hmm. Parkinson's disease, which is relatively rare. Mm -hmm. And then we have preclinical signs. One is a reduced um, f capability to smell. So okay. this is called hyposmia. Mm -hmm. The second very specific sign is the so-called REM sleep behavior disorder. This very complicated word means you dream and you enact your dream. You say what you dream, yeah. you move what you dream. And who shows this phenomenon has a very high chance to develop Parkinson's disease in 10 to 20 years. So, so there's a very, very early warning signs. Yeah, oh yes. And, yeah. and when I'm a patient, I'm starting to talk in my sleep and I start to moving out my dreams, to acting them out. Should I go and see a neurologist? Yes, I would do so. Yeah. And, and, and what can the neurologist do then? Well, he could either confirm or say, no, you won't get it. We need some particular specific investigations for that. But what is more important, a patient who has a high risk to develop Parkinson's disease can help with other patients together to test drugs, okay. whether they slow down the disease or prevent the disease. Can even prevent that. So it would be very helpful to have patients who like to participate in research. In my own surgery, often patients just come and have a little tremor, trembling hand, mm -hmm. and they ask me, because they are afraid, could this be Parkinson's disease? Well, there's a very simple test. For example, you ask the patient to be totally relaxed and then he takes the cup and then suddenly he starts shaking. Okay. And then you ask the patient to lift the cup and then the shaking stops. Mm -hmm. This is in favor of Parkinson's disease. Okay. If the patient is totally relaxed and the cup is not moved like this, mm -hmm. then you ask the patient to lift the cup 
then suddenly the shaking comes. This has nothing to do with Parkinson's. So it's a very simple test. Very simple. I don't have to go to a surgery for that. I can just try this no, out for myself. Just do it. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's so much research going on into Parkinson. Are there any new drugs or any methods in the pipeline in the future? Um, at present, it's a little bit frustrating. There, for the next one or two years, there will be no new drugs in the pharmacy. But we hope by three or four years, there will be some drugs. And we work very hard on compounds which should slow down the disease. That is the real challenge now. Okay. Professor Otto, thanks so much for being with us in the studio. Thank you. Thank you.